you're just joining us, we've got Kalpa and Tamide in the studio with us today. If you don't already know the discussion we are having on the hot takes, it's surrounding interracial dating and marriage. Welcome Tamide and Kalpa to the studio. Thank Hi, you. Thank you. Good morning, Hi, guys. Hello. Good morning. So I'm just going to jump right in and um, tell us a little bit about yourselves, how you guys are met. Uh, just an introduction. Okay. Do, do you want to go first? <laughs> All right. <laughs> She always does this. <laughs> All right, so um, we met in USIU. Uh-huh. Uh, we actually both ran for Mr. and Miss. Oh. And uh, we ended up winning. And um, funny enough, during the whole Mr. and Miss process, you're paired with somebody um, for the challenges. And we were paired up from day one. And so uh, we became friends from that time on. And we were the first pair, I guess, in history to actually end up winning the thing as well. So, yeah, we both won. And I think that was really the journey behind both of us. Yeah, yeah. So you're a pageant couple. Pageant. I don't I like, like that well, word. if you say it like <laughs> that. I don't like that word. <laughs> okay. Well, well, maybe you can tell us why you don't like that no, word. No, I think it's just a stereotype. You know, people misunderstand it. Um, and, you know, you think that if you're in a pageant, then you're just really looking for sort some of vain, superficial attention. reasons. Yeah. Shallow. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, let's let's move away from the shallow. But, and yeah. <laughs> but basically, at that time, you did not have that connection yet. It was just just the stars Friends. working Friends. in the favor yeah yeah in it's fact fresh. the first i think our first meeting officially was on when we started the competition they had like a list of participants and i saw her and what stood out is that she was you know obviously you can see how beautiful she is but she's a coder she like my hobbies are coding i'm like oh wow that's interesting and we actually had our very first conversation unfortunately i can't find the whatsapp our very first convo ever was about you know putting this knowledge we have to make the world africa a better place so yeah that was where it all started. They met yeah. in a pageant, but bonded over coding. coding. I <laughs> love it. But as you said, the pageant can sound a little yes. bit superficial. So let's dive into the real hot take. Yeah. Kalpa, let me ask you, what were some of your concerns about dating Tomide, considering the interracial factor and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, funny enough, you know, my answer to this question is funny because I did not think about the repercussions that were to happen. I just knew I liked this person so much. The worry I had was what if we date and then what if we break up and then our friendship is like ruined. So that was my major concern. And at that point, I think my eyes were on the target. I was like, you know what, if I'm set on this, I'm going to be ready for the repercussions. I wasn't really, you know, worrying and dwelling on like the issues that may come across, you know, from my family and everything. I was just ready to take it on. What about you, Tomide? What were your concerns? I think it's just, you know, not knowing how it's going to pan out. I come from, I'm Nigerian, and I come, I'm from the Yoruba tribe. You know, we're very, very cultural people, and I feel like Nigerians and Indians, we know, we have a lot in common because of culture. And um, from the bat, I knew that, okay, I just didn't know how it's going to work out. I come from a very cultural background. She does as well, you know. I know how rich India's cultural heritage is, and understanding that from my own point of view, it's just really not knowing how it's going to work, you know. Parents, it's just so much you just don't have an answer for. So... It was really just scared for, I guess, what most people are scared for when they hear about interracial couples. So, yeah, from the beginning, that was really what well, worried yeah, you. Yeah. What, what was the concern for a you? Cultural clash almost, yeah, maybe. Yeah, cultural clash because, you know, you're bringing two different worldviews together. Yeah. And marriage and relationships are more than just the individuals. There's the family aspect, you know. Nigerians and Indians were passionate about the same thing, food, clothes, culture. And Music. she's so patriotic. She's a proud Chennai girl, and I'm a very proud you by guy and so understanding that hmm, how is this going to work out that's what it was a bit confusing at first but i think obviously the fact that i knew what we had was real um it just yeah it, it dealt with everything <laughs> else <laughs> well you know what although in the world at large we see a lot of interracial couples and in media in our society we've got to be real here in yeah. nairobi you don't see it often mm. at all so mm. i just want to throw it out there if you have any questions that you want to ask them if you have mm anything um you can always whatsapp us on zero seven five eight one two three triple four or head on over to our socials that's facebook instagram twitter at radio 44 kenya and we are joined by tomide and kalpa where we are talking about all the challenges all the positives as well being an interracial couple now you mentioned that tomide you mentioned you're from nigeria kalpa yeah. is from chennai 
how did this meet happen? So you did you fly down here? What was the reason of coming to Kenya? Enlighten us. Okay, so I was born in India, mm -hmm. uh, but we came here a couple of years ago for work, of course. Uh, my dad was working in the United Nations and he had to move here. So I, we reestablished our base in Kenya. And so Kenya became our home and still is our home. But uh, my parents are back in India. And so I was left behind doing my undergrad because I, was, I wasn't finished with that and currently doing my MBA as well. So that's how the journey is. We've been here, I mean, I've been here for over 15 years um, with a bit of traveling in and out. But base is Kenya. Still Kenya. Yeah, exactly. And that's where we met during our undergrad is where I met Tom in university. So your yeah. parents have moved back to Chennai yes, and they've moved back. you've fallen in love with Kenya, I guess? Y yeah, <laughs> I mean, fallen in love with Kenya. Also, I think many years that I spent here, my job is here now. I studied here, so I I know I'll go back at some point, but probably just to visit. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tommy? Dea? What was the journey like from Nigeria to Kenya? So um, in 94, my family actually came down here. Um, we were here for about five years, then we went to different parts of the world, America, went back to Nigeria, then they eventually moved back. So um, just like her, like my family, this has been HQ. My siblings were born in Kenya. Um, yeah, and um, we've just been here ever since. So in different phases, but yeah, we've been here for so quite a while. So your family still? My family is still here. It's still in Kenya. In Kenya. Yeah. I mean, Nairobi is really a melting pot, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the, it the funny is. thing is, it, it's a melting pot. We have so many cultures in Nairobi, yet it's rare to see an interracial couple. So maybe you can walk us through some of the best parts of being an interracial couple and some of the challenges that you faced. Yeah, sure. Um, I think the best part is just the fact that, you know, Tom always says it this way. He always says, you realize that your world is bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, all along you've been thinking it's about your family, it's about your culture, it's about your language, and then you meet this person who is equally proud of where they come from. Um, and then in doing so, you appreciate how big the world is, how diverse the world is. Um, I think that's one of the major positives. And the negatives is, of course, you know, the stereotypes and stigma that comes with interracial couples, even mostly, um, sorry to say, but mostly from the Asian community. There's a lot of, no, you shouldn't do that. You know, you should marry within our community. I mean, if I wanted to, I would. And if I had seen someone who I liked, I would have. But this is what I wanted. So there's a lot of that, you know, tension when I meet some people along the way who say it without saying it. You know, they, they look at it without looking like, hmm. hmm. I'm judging you, but I'm, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna act cool. <laughs> and we've been through that. Tom has been through that a couple of times, you know, unknowingly and knowingly. And no offense, I, I get that, you know, they come from a different generation and this was not normal back then. And I'm not forcing anyone to accept it, but I'm not afraid to at least talk about it. You know, I don't have to hide anything. I guess from what you said, Radhika, there are couples. They just would not prefer talking about it mm. because of the fear of you know um, the stigma from the community that is really true and you know in india we have this thing log kya kahenge yes right which is what will the community mm. say and yeah that really puts pressure even if you do like someone of a different um, race yeah. you might not pursue it exactly yeah <laughs> very true what about you Tommy? Yeah. what are the ups what are the downs i think like what she said i think the ups are realizing how much bigger the world is you know um and humanity is so bent on going to space to discover new races, not knowing that there's a whole nother world here on Earth. You know, being a Nigerian, being Yoruba, there's our, from our music, you know, our life is so culturally rich. But then I'm meeting somebody from something that's, you know, the equivalent from a different part of the world. It really puts things in perspective. You appreciate how big the world is. Um, and I think one of the cool things about it is just how cultures can complement, you know. Um, I mix Nigerian food with Indian food, you know, <laughs> yeah. and it's quite cool, you know, you can't do that on a normal day. So I feel like there's, there's a lot more power in the combination. You know, a lot of people think that, oh, um, when you bring these two cultures, one will drown out the other. But no, I think two, when the two come together, you realize that there's a lot more you can do and you have more appreciation for yours. Um, in terms of challenges, I think like what she said, um, luckily because we were in school, you know, in uni, no one is going to, like, really make a big deal about it. I think the pressure now comes when I find myself in um, maybe an Asian community or, I, you know, I go to Parklands, I go to a store with her or something like that. And the funny thing is that I feel like it's more internal. I just have 
you know in the beginning it was really tough because you just feel like everyone is just judging you everyone is looking at you a certain type of way and um what made me used to what i think got to me is that i i didn't want people to look at at kalpa and you know say bad things about okay. her and insult her because they don't know they don't know what we've been through. they don't know what Very this true. thing is about so yeah i think those are the only lows at times it's in my head you know without things actually happening but yeah true well if you have any questions for kalpa and Tobide, do let us know you can text or whatsapp on 0758123444 or catch us on social media at radio 44 kenya as addictive as your morning cuppa it's radio 44's morning fix with Bhagav and Radhika. And today we're also joined by a very special couple who have been chatting with us about interracial dating, interracial marriage, and all the issues surrounding it. Because yep. it can be a controversial topic. It's accepted in some societies, while other people still don't get the concept. And I think the main concern that people have is the difference between the cultures. And that's why I want to ask you, I'll start with Tom. Was there anything that absolutely shocked you um, about the Indian culture first of all what shocked me is how similar we are you oh, know okay. um, there are a lot of similarities you know um, Nigerians are crazy about rice um, <laughs> <laughs> and Indians are too um, and yeah just the meals and all of those things we love spice you know um, but obviously in that there were some things that shocked me for example um, this you know Kalpa loves I, w- I didn't understand why she had yogurt with everything. <laughs> um, that was a bit confusing at first, you know? I'm like, why Why are you pouring yogurt on your food? <laughs> you know what? I think, personally, jollof rice and they, like, right there, right, yeah. it that slaps. sounds like an absolutely killer combination. But, you know, as time has gone on, I think I've started to appreciate it because, like, now I take right there. Like, I, I have no issue with it. I think it's just in the beginning. You know, it's quite confusing. Nigerians make, you know, stew with tomatoes and everything and that's how we understand rice and so when you now bring that same thing and then you're pouring yogurt you're just like what's <laughs> happening over here yeah but i think that just really minor things like that really you know the similarities um and i'm um, just understanding um you know those things that make you know her culture unique yeah what about for you was there anything about the nigerian culture that shocked you yeah like tom said i think the similarity is very shocking um, so we, I, I went to Nigeria to, to meet his family, his extended family. And when we were there, you know, they were prostrating. Like literally when they would see elders, oh. they would touch their feet. And, you know, and I was like, we do the same, same. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, food, of course, is very similar. I mean, uh, you know, music as well. Like I, I could dance to like consecutively like Indian Nigerian, Indian, Nigerian, and I wouldn't even <laughs> see the difference. Um, but also another thing that was really cool to note was his upbringing is so similar to the way we are brought up, you know, the, the respect we have for our parents, the hierarchy we have in our home, you know, you know, it's like dad, mom, brother, than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so they have they have pretty much the same thing and the respect to your parents, the way you speak to them, the tone with which you speak. I mean, don't be surprised if you're beaten as a child like that's that's like very normal so I think uh, some of those things were like pretty interesting because they grew up also in a part like in the US and everything yeah. but that didn't change their culture, you know, their they culture. Are bringing. yeah exactly yeah. now someone has texted us and I think this is the question many people are waiting to know they ask lovely to see this beautiful couple in the studio I'd like to ask them how their families reacted to your relationship did they come open to them from the very first day or not mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so one of the things that I decided to do, um, because from the from the onset I knew that, you know, if I went home and said, Hey mom, hey dad, this is the person. Um, I know my parents are cool and everything, but I just I had to prepare for everything. So one of the things I did is that I didn't bring it up to them after we were dating for about a year. Because for me that was like this is real, this is not a joke, this is who I'm I want to spend the rest of my life with. And when that happened, it was easier for them to understand that, okay, fine, we get it. So one of the things that had happened, which made it easier, is that my grandfather, before he passed away and he came to Kenya, then we were just friends as Mr. and Miss. But in his heart, he felt that we were going to end up together. We didn't even know. And so he told my father that, listen, I think this is what's going to happen, but I've prepared the way. So he, he being the head of the family, talked to all his siblings, everyone, before we actually started dating. So when it happened, 
everyone was like okay yeah we've been prepared for this and so what happened is you know we took her we went to nigeria for the funeral and it was also a way of her meeting the family so i think because of how that happened um it wasn't you know too much of a shock because we were missed and miss first our parents my parents knew her as yeah this is you know the person that won missed and miss with tom so um it was gradual it was gradual but i think there were some right. calculated moves yeah that i had to take as well so <laughs> they know that Very i'm not cool. joking around this is the real deal yeah oh, wow yeah um, i think that's an important thing to actually show that you're serious about it and it's not just a phase exactly. i don't know if you've heard this mm. crazy concept that it could be a phase <laughs> that you like someone of the opposite yeah. or not opposite race of a different race yeah. Yeah. So, exactly yeah. well we'll still keep it with Kalpa and Tomide right here we have many questions for you in fact i'm getting so many questions from people asking many many different things if you have any questions for them do let me know on 0758123444 or catch us on social media we are still talking to Kalpa and Tomide an, an interracial couple but there's one thing i want to bring out you know as much as we're talking about interracial marriages and interracial relationships there have been times especially where i come from Indian community we generally have this casteism forget even interracial we have the casteism marriages does that happen in nigeria as well too? yeah um but for us it's more of like you know tribal mm -hmm. so nigeria has you know nearly up to 200 different ethnic groups so you have yorubas you have ibos you have houses you have so many other subgroups even in the yoruba community because we have uh yoruba states you have families who say you can't marry from a different you know you can't marry from this state you can't marry from oh. this that you know so it happens as well it's a it's a i guess it's a worldwide cultural problem. worldwide problem yeah yeah i mean it's similar to uh, kenyan tribes you know we have different areas they might not intermarry with each yeah. other yeah and the same thing it happens in india a lot the way you said it yeah. as especially like i'm a brahmin sometimes you can't even they even though they're gujaratis mm. um i might not be able to well now times are changing but it has still i can still see out there there's still people who can't marry a patel for example who is also a gujarati mm. but they still can't kalpa what yeah have you experienced the same yeah i mean i have first-hand experience from you know my parents um they are they did an intercaste marriage and it was a love marriage and this oh. is back in 1993 when these things were not very normal um so there was a lot of opposition from their family and they went ahead with it regardless and um you know i was even told that from my dad's family some people like cut ties with him completely for about five and six years uh, from my mom's side, a few of them were like, okay, we'll support you, but then if anything were to happen, we don't take responsibility. So it was a lot of like, you know, hand washing. Mm. Like, you chose this life, you manage it, but fine. As elders, we will be there to, to make the marriage happen. And then after that, it was a nuclear family. I, I mean, I guess that's why I haven't really interacted with my cousins so much and all that up until very recently. Um, so it's been a nuclear family, you know, we've, we've been just the three of us, mom, dad, and I. And this is like a really major story in their lives where they're like, you know what, our community was not really good with it, but we don't care. I mean, we've gone out of India and we don't feel that same opposition here in Kenya. But the best part is, I think your parents can now understand, because they had an intercaste marriage, I think they can get the interracial marriage as well, right? Yeah, I think... Okay, it hasn't been the easiest to have those conversations with them, truly. But the opposition is not more like he's not brown. That's not the talk. You know, it's more like we don't know how this is going to work. Like this is we've never done this before. Like, so what are we expected to do? Mm -hmm. So it's more like a parent's concern about did you guys think about 10 years down the line? What you're going to teach your children? You know, what language are they going to know? And that kind of logistics. But it's never been like, how could you not marry an Indian? Yeah. Do you feel extra pressure because you're the girl child? Because in my experience, I've seen that when an African or when an Indian man chooses to marry an African woman, there seems to be nothing wrong with that. But then when an Indian girl wants to take charge of her future and choose who she wants to love, then there's opposition left, right and center from people you don't even know are judging you. Right. Have you seen that in society or have you experienced it yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think in a very subtle way, I felt that pressure. Um, and it also happens because I'm an only child. So you know, for my parents, I'm all they have, you know, there is no brother or sister after me. So they, it's like, you better get this right. It's like one try, you know, 
Uh, but then for sure, like I think I've seen the, the couples we've interacted with, um, even from our YouTube channel, it's mostly been a man who's the Indian, and then uh, the girl, the girls from like anywhere from Africa. Uh, but in our case, it's different, and we've never seen couples like that. And it's very rare. I haven't even seen one, by the way, where the girl is the Indian. And I think it comes with a lot of uh, pressure from the girl's side. Is in an Indian family, the the role that we are expected to play is like super intense. You know, you go to school, you don't leave the house after this time. You only have a particular set of friends. You don't talk like this to your parents. It's a lot of like, don't do this. And they, it's like their way of preparing you, like marinating you for the marriage <laughs> life. You know, I, I love that word, marinating, marinating you. you. Yeah, it's, it's but you know what? You guys are breaking boundaries. You're kind of showing people that, hey, if you believe in your love and if it's serious, don't let anyone hold you back. Yes, and you know what? Many people are loving the fact that you're coming out there and talking about how the challenges were. Mm. You are inspiring quite a few. I've got so many WhatsApp messages which I'll be reading soon. But for now, let's take a look at the traffic. Okay. <laughs> As I said, Kalpa and Tomide, you have actually inspired so many people out there, including the people in the studio. That's Radhika, myself and Irene. Thank you so much for coming. But I want to read some comments to you. Well, Paul says, I love how the two decided to not listen or be bothered by what the society thinks of them kudos intermarriage between diverse communities and cultures just encourages me that we can make this world a great place that's wow. amazing that's wow. really sweet i love the ending that we can make this world yeah. a great place yeah. without yeah. the divisions Definitely. that society is putting on us Definitely. and we have ed who also messaged and his message is as sweet he says i admire the couple since i got to know them oh, wow. so that's wow. super wow. sweet very sweet <laughs> kaushik also says kalpa and tom you guys look awesome together. Thank you. I was Thank you. just telling them that imagine on their wedding day in his Nigerian formal wear and her in her Indian formal wear, they're gonna look like kings and queens. Aww. Very true. <laughs> we can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, that brings out the point. You guys are engaged. Yes. yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. The Thank ring. <laughs> Like, may I take a picture of your ring, please? Because yes. I need to... Or you could just show it. You could just show it. If you're logged on on radio44.co.k, you can see the ring. I need to hint to anyone that me, I want this type of ring. Please, take a picture. Well, Thank you. speaking about your engagement, we have a congratulations a message from Chani. She says, hey, I don't have a question for Kalpa and Tom, but just a massive congratulations on their engagement. I hope their future is a bright or as bright as they are, much wow. love. Thank, Thank you, Chani. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. So the engagement happened a week ago? Week? Yeah. Last week. Thursday. Actually, it's been exactly a week. No, Thursday. Oh, wait, sorry. Last week. Oh, this is Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday. Thursday last week. Yes. Well, wow. Fresh into the fiance status. Yeah. We just got a last question that sums up the whole interview quite well. Paul asks, what impact would you want your love story to have? Mm -hmm. I it's a think a bit of a deep one. It is, yeah. it is. And I think for me, it's really that there's power in, you know, bringing in, in our unity. A lot of times, I think the reason why people are very skeptical or they resist these things is that you think that one culture is going to drown out the other. Um, but if you look at it historically, Africans, Indians, we've gone through a lot of the same things, you know, and uh, our cultures aren't that far apart. So for me, I feel like I just want people to see that there's power in, in love and there's power in our unity. Um, and I believe that we can influence the world a lot better, you know, just imagine the next generation having somebody with an understanding of Nigerian culture and Indian culture. What can that do for our world, you know? I feel like Really, the message is just about love. So I feel, um, yeah, that's really it. That love is the most powerful thing, most powerful force. Yeah. I love it. The unity part really got to me. But I love love is the most powerful force. <laughs> 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 what about you, Kalpa? Um, you know, just along the same lines, I feel like standing your ground. This this time of you know dealing with so many things in our relationship, good and bad, has taught me to stand my ground. As an Indian girl, you know, from a very orthodox family and everything, I've had to go through a couple of questions and interrogations and conversations that are uncomfortable. Uh, so it has really taught me personally, it has taught me to be brave about what I stand for, be courageous, so regardless of whether you're Indian, you're African, wherever you're from, you have the right to choose who you want to be with 
and um, that's really up to you you know so for me that's it like love speaks for itself yeah. I feel inspired brave and inspired <laughs> no I actually do and the fact that you've overcome it and now you're on the other side at least people can see that inspiration it's yeah. great yeah. <laughs> very true Kalpa and Tomide thank you so much thank for you. coming to our studios and for inspiring our listener as well it has been a pleasure having you here. Both Radhika and I are inspired, and I'm sure everyone out there is too. Thank you, thank Bhaga. you so much thank for you, having us. Thank you, Radhika. You guys are awesome, and thank you for having us. That yes. like our first ever show we're talking about it. You know? So yeah. kudos to you for taking <laughs> yeah. that leap of faith as well. That's what we do yeah. here on the Hot Takes on yeah. Radio 44. <laughs> and up next, I have Kishore Kumar, Sumit Kumar, and Vishal Dadlani Bachna Ehsino. <laughs>